Is it called anxiety? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like sort of just a need to fix things in a lot of ways. Um, again, it's like I'm, I'm like making a mess and then fixing it. Well, I grew up with three older brothers and they always left me out. So I feel like I was always kind of independent playing. <laughs> um, so I feel like I kind of quickly learned to be alone a lot um, in a place that was chaotic in a lot of ways. Um, not to say that we never got along, we did. I had a great family. Um, but I think that I took a class in high school and it was a sculpture class and um, I remember the teach I having so, some kind of ideas in, that was to make a sculpture in metals and um, and wire and everyone else had sort of like these paper sculptures but the teacher didn't let me know that I was thinking differently until the end and we had our final like project due and mine was this huge like clock that had numbers coming off into the air and everything and else and everyone else had cardboard and paper and I was like felt really embarrassed and then they told me actually this is great let's encourage it like you you think differently so embrace that um, so I think that I, I kind of have a natural tendency towards visual kind of inventions <laughs> um, but I, I think maybe like later on in high school, um, going, I, I kind of really decided I wanted to pursue going to art school. And, and from there, I kind of felt like it was no turning back, um, which I think was stubborn, but I think that's sort of how you have to be to be an artist. It's funny, I feel like, let's say 10, 15 years ago, I was making paintings that had specific reproductions of pa other paintings in art history inside my paintings because I almost couldn't figure out what type of painter I wanted to be. So I was like, I guess I'll just try all of them in one painting. And through that, I was kind of teaching myself how to paint and how to make mistakes and how to live with the mistakes. And I, I kind of, when I dropped being really specific about other artists within my own work is when I, f I realized that, I, oh, I was, I'm actually just a, also a good painter. I just needed to like see it myself. Um, so those references are always gonna come up. That happens with everybody. Um, I think it's more of like a celebration of me just being so in love with all the painters that have come before me that it's almost like, of course, that looks like a part of a Frankenthaler next to a Hockney next to a David Dana Schutt. You know, it's just, it's going to be a mixed mashup because it's, it's almost impossible not to have some kind of reference. So I embrace it. A lot of times people will, will come to my paintings and say, oh, have you been looking at so-and-so? And I won't even know who that is. So um, it doesn't mean that I haven't seen them or I'm totally unaware, but I kind of love it when that happens. Since the beginning, I've always been interested in um, combining different techniques in one that shouldn't go together. And how do I make my own world in a lot of ways out of totally different elements and pieces and patterns and shapes and um, all, all different types of paintings in one, basically. Um, it's almost as if I've, I've said, you know, no, I don't want the red skill. I want all of the skills together and they need to work together. Um, so I use a lot of different techniques like spray paint or dye and uh, oil paint, enamels, um, airbrush at times, markers. Um, so recently with the landscapes, I start on the totally raw canvas and I'll usually dye it um, a certain number of colors or work abstractly for a while with acrylic, something that dries pretty quickly. 
And then from there, I'll kind of figure out what kind of space this is. And I'll really think, how does this logically, how would this logically unfold or illogically unfold? Um, and, and I think that kind of gives me a lot of freedom within the mark making and when, with all the different kind of, um, I guess, quilting of, of, uh, of techniques together that feel almost um, wrong, but how do I make it right? And so I think being able to use all of that at one is really important to, to how the, the painting ends up. The use of color is um, also totally unplanned. Um, it's always on the spot. I never pre-mix. I never have ideas before I come to it, um, to, to the blank canvas. It's really like, I'm always trying to do something that I've never seen before with, with comparison of my, to my own paintings. Um, you know, maybe a certain color combination you've seen in the past or in, in art, art history, but um, they, I, I always try to do something that surprises me and that feels um, a little bit weird, but it has to be there. So to make a painting that's convincible and not necessarily right or true is, is sort of like my approach with the color. Landscapes to me, I feel like, are more of an access point to speak to the viewer about painting in a lot of ways. Um, they're not places I've ever been or think about or uh, memories. They're nothing. They're not. They're almost placeless in a lot of ways. Um, I like that kind of um, that kind of uh, unknown place to be, sort of placeless for everyone so they can kind of enjoy what they're seeing and they can make up their own ideas of where they are, where this could be. Um, to me, that gives me a lot of freedom with working with that subject matter. It's almost like um, I'm not painting a landscape in a lot of ways. They're just uh, compositions. They're just paintings. They're, they're, you know, a bunch of colors together and shapes. Um, so I think that's sort of why I was drawn to the landscape because it felt like I didn't need the subject matter as much as I, as I needed to make the painting. So um, if I had kind of decided where the painting was gonna go or how it would end up before I started the painting, it almost felt like, what's the point of making it? So um, being more of a painter and being active with the painting and it telling me where it's gonna end up more than I kind of control it, um, is, is important for me, and that's kind of what, what keeps me going with the work. It's good you end up, for me at least, I'm looking at every picture, at every picture, it's, it's a world of its own. Yes. And all the pictures are enormously different. I mean, they are colorful, but it's different worlds. Yes. Is every painting a world on its own, for you? Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, or maybe it's just the one world all together that I'm living in by myself. <laughs> but um, I, I don't think, okay, well, this world is going to be um, super dramatic and dark. And then the next world is going to be light and fluffy. It really just, like, the minute I decide this is going to be yellow painting, it turns into a black painting. So um, they are totally worlds of their own. But... Um, they're not, they're not specific. Yeah, so I wanted to start the flower painting series um, because I did want sort of a more specific look at one part of the, of the landscape. And typically in, in painting and history with flower paintings, they're usually in a vase, they're usually a still life, they're usually cut, um, already dead. So most uh, none of the paintings, the flower paintings, are, are still lifes. They're all in the landscape, and they might be close-ups of them, um, or they might be a lot of in one kind of grouping. Um, they almost became more self-portraits or portraits of other people or crowds, and I kind of like that because it adds a little bit, um, a little bit of narrative within the work, but it's still 
not enough to make you feel like you have to understand something to look at the painting. Um, they're still, at the end of the day, just paintings that are the same way that I approach the landscapes. Um, I like the idea of like the symbolism of the flower. I feel like it's usually seen as like beautiful and delicate and the paintings that I'm making are not really that. They're, they're aggressive and they're, um, you know, ugly at times and they're um, beautiful at times and they're close-ups and they're uh, far away and, and they're just, they're more active than what you think of like a typical flower painting would be like. So I kind of am embracing the idea of some, like changing the way we see something. in New York and just on the way out here we saw kind of homeless people you know could, this is in a way a terrible world out there it's mm. a fascinating world as well you know looking at your pictures you don't find that at, mm. at all is it because you distance yourself from the world out there or is it exactly a, a commentary to the world out there? I think it's probably both I think that um, in a way that the first time you see my paintings they feel very inviting and, oh, look at the colors, I gotta get up close to that. But if you were actually in this space, in that world, it would be terrifying. And it's, um, I feel like in a lot of ways, they feel hopeful, but they feel scary. So there's kind of both push and pull elements to the paintings and they pull you in and then they push you out. And it's the, dis the, the space within them and the way that I'm attacking the canvas kind of like, grabs you but it but you kind of you're staying with it but you're feeling uneasy and so I feel like in a lot of ways that is a commentary of what's going on right now like we have to go through this because we're living right now but it feels kind of like a struggle and it feels uneasy and it feels um it feels hopeful and it feels scary and it feels all of the things and I feel like I'm doing all of the things with the paintings and um so it's both, and it feels like an or a way of me organizing chaos. I think when I make a painting that I feel like is good, it's going to the edge and not giving away all the answers and completely describing something. It's, it's putting suggestions next to each other and letting the painting kind of like twist in a way that is malleable but not closed off. So I think there's a way, there's sometimes where I, I can take a painting and it's almost too illustrative in, or like it gives away too many answers. And so if I can get there with doing both and kind of having this kind of teetering edge to keep you interested, I think that makes a good painting.